everyone, we're in week three of Rhetoric 6620, and we're going to do something pretty different this week um, in terms of the, the text that we're going to read and we're going to listen to. Um, so I'm not going to talk much about the specific readings, but I will talk a little bit about what connects them, and I'll spend some time explaining what we're going to do this week with those readings and those podcast episodes. This week, we're going to learn about assessment practices. Last week, we learned about assessment theories and how people have thought about and conceptualized assessment and what it means and how we should think about assessment. Um, this week we're going to start turning to book chapters, articles, podcast episodes that more directly operationalize some of those theories and talk about how we actually go about assessing student writing. I'm assigning these readings in the same week that you have your first major assignment due and I realize that that could be problematic. So we're going to do something a little bit different with the readings. We're going to try to help each other out. So let me switch screens and explain a little bit about what we're going to do this week with the readings and the podcast episodes for week three. Hey everyone, this is our class um, website in Blackboard and it looks a little different because it's, um, it's the instructor version and not all the stuff you can see just yet while I'm making this video, but in week three, that's what we're talking about. Module three, um, down here is the link for submitting your first major assignment. And that first major assignment, you should be drawing upon things that you're going to read about this week. Um, I'm splitting you all up into groups, and I'll explain that here in just a second. And you'll want to, probably want to integrate things that you read um, as part of your group work. And you will, I think, definitely want to cite some things that are not included with that group work. And how are we going to go about doing that? Um, well, we're going to do that by splitting things up and helping each other out. So we have, there's there's nine texts that get at different um, assessment practices that I think are important, that I think are relevant um, to writing assessment, some that y'all have heard about, and others that I think are going to um, maybe freak you out a little bit. So we have portfolios. Y'all are probably familiar with portfolios. So Sarah and Kate, you're going to read Peter Elbow and Pat Belanoff's article about uh, portfolios being a substitute for proficiency exams, um, like exit exams, stuff that you came across in, in week two. Um, you also read Hamp Lyons and Condon's questioning assumptions about portfolio-based assessments. So you're going to read a couple articles about portfolio assessments. Again, an assessment practice that we're probably pretty familiar with. Ryan and Christina, you're going to read um, and listen to a podcast episode about specification grading, which is pretty interesting stuff. It's very different um, than traditional grades. So you're going to learn a little bit about that, and you're going to teach us as a class, and I'll talk about what that's going to look like here in just a second. But you're going to teach us about specification grading, so that if we wanted to write about that in our first major essay, we could do that based upon your help. Justin and Anthony, you're going to learn about ungrading, which, woo wee, that one is challenging to me, but it's it's an important challenge. It's made me think about the efficacy, efficacy of grades and how grades kind of get in the way of learning sometimes. And Jesse Stommel says, let's just kind of do away with that altogether. Um, grades are something that we need to submit as part of our, you know, our contract with the institution that we're working with, but are there ways to go about grading that kind of honor that that relationship between teacher and learner. So you're going to learn about that and you're going to teach the class about that. There's a podcast episode and then his website has a ton of excellent resources on ungrading. Um, I'd also recommend taking a look at his FAQ and I think he has a page about beginning ungrading that you might take a look at. Samantha and Kim, um, Peter Elbow and Jan, uh, Jane Danielovitz's unilateral grading contract. Um, I'm going to talk to you all a little bit more about grading contracts later in the term, so there's a lot more to read about grade contracts. Asawa Noe's got some stuff about grade contracts that we're going to read about in week four. Um, grade contracts are something that I integrate into some of my teaching, um, and I can talk about how I've done that, but you all are going to read this article. It's a pretty important article. We kind of got folks really thinking about grade contracts in our discipline. It's longer, so you all just have this one article. I'm going to pitch in and help too. So I read Peter Elbow's uh, Grading Student Writing. Um, it's about minimal marking and about um, simplifying the criteria for how we evaluate student writing. And then I also read Ed White's Holisticism, which um, talks about uh, more like portfolio scoring or essay scoring that's done for like proficiency exams or entrance exams. So these are the texts that we're going to encounter this week. And I can't emphasize this enough. Y'all's work with this is to be helpful to others, is to be helpful to your peers. Um, 
I don't want to assign nine things and then also ask you guys to write an essay. Like I, I, I think that there's probably a law somewhere that I should not do that. And I don't want to do that, but I do want us to be able to help each other out. And these are important things. And they're things that you should probably, that you should definitely be, um, alluding to talking about in that first major essay. So we're going to do each other a solid and help each other out. So here are your groups. Here are the texts that you're going to be taking a look at as you're writing your first essay. This is the place to go to download these texts. If you want to cite them and you want to get in there and, and skim them a little bit. Uh, but I want the summaries and what we're doing with these texts to help point your peers in the direction of where they need to look for the important information in these articles. So here's what we're doing. Um, instructions for what we're going to do on, um, and it's due on Thursday, July 13th. So you can either do all of it through the discussion board, or you can do, um, or you can join a class meeting and then also put some stuff up on the discussion board so folks can find it. So if you're able to join us for a Teams meeting at six o'clock, um, and that's Eastern time on Thursday, July 13th, you're going to put some things up on the discussion board so folks can find it. In the subject line, you're going to use the name of the author and a short title of the article, the chapter, whatever text that you encountered. And you do one for each text you were assigned. So if you were assigned two, you're going to put up two discussion board posts, um, one for each text. But in the subject line, name of the author, short title of the article, chapter, or podcast episode. You're doing that so we can find it quickly. You're going to prepare an abstract. So it's a summary. Um, it should be a helpful summary that you're going to share with the class. Um, you'll summarize the the, S, uh, the text for the class in our in our online meeting. You're going to generate some questions that you have about the text, anything that you thought might need clarification, problems that you had with the text. You're going to post that to the discussion board, and you'll also share them in the class meeting. Key, um, I think the most helpful parts of this is going to be the key quotes and sections of the text that your peers will need to want will want to follow up and read. And the summary. I think those are two things that I'd, if you're going to invest your time somewhere and, and make sure you do this well, it's those two things. That summary, and those key quotes and sections um, that folks need to know in order to really understand that piece. So you're going to do that. Um, you're going to talk to the class about your response to the text as well. You, uh, but the things that you're actually going to put up on the discussion board, it's these four little sub bullet points right here. Um, and I have an example in case you have questions, in case you get a little bit turned around. So these things on the discussion board, and we'll talk about them in our class meeting. And then this part, you don't need to put on the discussion board. Um, you just talk about what was your reaction to the text. All right, so that's if you're able to join us. Not everyone will be able to do that, and I understand that. Um, so no shame if you, you know, can't join us online. That's totally fine. But here are the things that you're going to do. Everything that I've already mentioned above with the subject line, name of the author, the abstract, um, questions, key quotes. Um, but you're also going to write about your reaction to the text, what you found interesting, challenging, problematic, useful, and connect the reading what we've, with what we've already learned in the class. So um, because we have that essay due on, on the 16th, I'd like you all to get this in as close as possible to Thursday, July 13th. I'm going to have my two up. Um, you know, shortly after I release the week three folders that you definitely have those two texts that, you, you know, if you want to learn more about them for your first major essay, you have information um, on the discussion board. And let me show you what I did so far. There we go. So I read Ed White's Holisticism. And so a little bit of information about the tech and see the subject line, Ed White's Holisticism, again, so you all can find it quickly. Um, I put some information in here, um, some details, you know, in case you wanted to use this for your essay and you wanted to cite it. Um, I'm citing it out of a edited collection, but it was originally published in College Composition and Communication. If you want me to track that down for you, I think I can. Um, or no, I think um, I put the College Composition and Communication version that's what's in the discussion board, uh, or that's what's in the um, in the week three folder. But my my citations they refer to the, the edited collection. Sorry about that. Okay, you have this text. That's what I'm saying. So you got the summary here. Um, 
quotes and must reads, things that I think are really important for y'all to read. So I have some specific quotes here. Sometimes I have a little bit of um, um, a little commentary after the quote. And then here I just said, um, I'm not going to summarize this for you, um, but you need, if you really want to understand this piece, you really do need to quickly read this these six procedures he recommends for effective holistic scoring. Then I have my reaction, um, and I think I need to add my quotes down here. So by the time, by the time this um, this week is released to the class, I'll have I'll clean this up, and you can kind of use this as a as a template if you want. But again, I can't emphasize enough: make this useful. So um, post the post your your stuff to the discussion board uh, by the end of Thursday, July 13th. If you're able to join us at 6 o'clock p.m. on the 13th for a conversation about you know, what you read, um, I'm looking forward to chatting with y'all. I'll share the two articles um, that I read. Um, and again, I, I can't emphasize this enough, make these things useful to folks. Um, I want you to be able to take my summary of Ed White's book, or Ed White's uh, chapter of um, uh, Peter Elbow's uh, article, I want you to be able to take that and say, yeah, I can look at that and, um, and take what Dr. Scott wrote, skim a little bit where he's kind of directed my attention to, and I could write intelligently um, about that uh, for my first major essay. If you want to get in and read some of this stuff, like totally encourage you to do that. Maybe you download it and something that you read, um, you know, before, you know, the next time you teach a, a writing class, particularly the, the, the um, the Peter Elbow piece about minimal marking. Oof, it saved my bacon a number of times. So that's that's the plan for this week. I'm going to record that conversation on the 13th, so if we just get a handful of people there, that's fine. Uh, but I will bookmark it so that you can go to specific places to learn about these texts, and then you'll have also the discussion board posts um, to really help you get a, a good understanding of what some of these texts are doing. Again, let's, let's help each other out this week. If you all have questions, you get turned around. It's a little different thing. I get that. Um, I hope my instructions are clear. But if you do get turned around, you need some help, just holler. Happy to happy to help you out. Also happy to answer any questions that you have about the reading. If you want to bounce ideas, um, you want me to take a look at your summary or something like that, I'd be happy to. I've read all these texts myself. So that's it for this week. Looking forward to chatting with you all on the 13th if you can make it. And if not, I'll see you on the discussion boards. Bye now.